Welcome to Biblios, the space where we think about biblical thinking. And we're really happy once again to have Dr. John Pauline with us from Loma Linda University. Dr. Pauline, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Now, Dr. Pauline, one thing I was wondering about um, when reading Revelation is you have the seven churches at the beginning of the book of Revelation. And I was wondering, especially on a church like Laodicea, is it talking about Laodicea of the past? Is it something in the present or is it something in the future? Well, Laodicea is a real city. Um, it was uh, actually quite a large city for the ancient world. Uh, at one point had more than 200,000 people. Uh, we know that because uh, there are four stadiums and they total about 45,000 seats. And scholars calculate that for every person that lived in a city, uh, for every seat in all these theaters, they usually have six people in the population. Mm -hmm. They kind of just had a, had a sense of it, uh, how big they would build the stadiums depending on the population. So that would be about 270,000. So Laodicea was a significant city. It had running water. Mm -hmm. It may have been lukewarm, but mm -hmm. it was running. <laughs> and uh, the pipes underneath the surface and so on. So it was a real city in a real place. It was at the junction of two major highways, so it was a commercial center. And then the harbor at one end in Ephesus silted up, mm -hmm. and Ephesus no longer became a port city. And when the traffic slowed down, Laodicea died. Oh. About uh, 500 years after the book of Revelation, it was a ghost town and has remained so to this day and they're just beginning to excavate it. Uh, I've been back a couple times in the last 10, 15 years and uh, they are beginning to excavate it and, and bring out from under the surface a lot of interesting things. So Laodicea was a real place. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to the beginning of the book of Revelation, it says that uh, there were uh, you know, seven churches in Asia Minor. You had Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, nice. Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Each of those was a real place. Okay. Each of those is an identifiable city of the ancient uh, province of Asia in the Roman Empire. So uh, Revelation says the beginning, write this down and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia and it names them. Mm. So uh, certainly whatever we make of this Laodicean message, we should start with the original context. If you may remember from one of our earlier programs, we talked about the fact that God meets people where they are. Mm. Now, if the primary message of Laodicea were for today, then God would give it today. But he went back in 95 AD, gave this message, so it must have had significance for its time and place. In fact, if you go back to chapter one, verse one, it says, the time is near. Actually, verse 3, the time is near. So he's talking about a context uh, that's fairly immediate there in, in the initial sense. So uh, the first thing I would have to say is Laodicea was a real city, and these are messages to real cities. It's interesting that, um, you know, obviously the text had um, an initial sort of historical context, yet we find it in a book that um, you know, might describe as prophetic, mm -hmm. uh, sort of speaking towards the future. Um, so whilst it has a historical um, setting, can it say something about the, about the future? Does it say something about the future? Is it supposed to speak to the future as well, being set within a prophetic context? Actually, the message to Laodicea was designed to speak to every future. And that's stated right in the text. Just as the other is stated in the text, this is also stated in the text. And in Revelation 3, 22, it says, He... Oh, chapter 3. Chapter 3, chapter yeah. Three. The Laodicean message is the last part of chapter 3. So it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So at the end of this message is, whoever has an ear. You got an ear? Yeah, yeah. two. What about you? Two as well. Two as well, okay. Do I still have them? They're good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, good. So anybody who has an ear should pay attention to this message. That means every person who reads or hears the book. The, the reason it talks about hearing is, is actually at the beginning it says, Blessed is the one who reads 
and those who hear. So the whole idea was that this would be dramatized to the church. Hmm. It's, it's actually a dramatic book. It's designed almost scripted like a play in seven acts and things like that. So uh, the first purpose of the message to Laodicea is to a literal city, a literal church at that time and place. Second purpose is to anybody who reads this book. Hmm. So is that good enough for you? Well, you know, I, I think Still haven't answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there, there's you know, there's more than one church mentioned um, within the passage, um, and um, I'm just sort of scanning through it. It seems that at the end of each one, it sort of says, you know, hear what the the Spirit says to the right. churches. Mm -hmm. um, some churches are described um, in positive terms, some in less mm -hmm. positive terms. So, are we supposed to hear what the Spirit says to all of the churches at the same time, or uh, do some churches apply more in certain contexts than, than others? And sort of Can I answer that? Yes. <laughs> 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 you gave me an option, but I like them both. <laughs> I think the text that we just read, and there's one of those with each of the churches. So mm. this, you know, to whoever has an ear, let him hear. That's, you find that at the end of all the churches. So each of these letters is intended to speak to whoever you know, is, is interested in these messages. So these messages are first of all to original cities, real cities, real churches at that time and place. Second of all, the message is to whoever is interested in this book, whoever reads the book should get a benefit from each of these messages. Now the question you're asking, is Laodicea the last of the churches maybe for the end of time? Okay. Well, it's not apocalyptic. You don't have statues, you don't have dragons, you don't have a lot of the signs of apocalyptic here. So the question is, how would we decide that this is a message for the end time church? Well, first of all, let's go to chapter 3 and verses 17 and 18, right in the middle of this text. It says, for you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realizing that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind, and naked. It says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. All right, so this, the core message to Laodicea is uh, you need gold, you need raiment, you need eyesight. And here are the way, here's the way that I suggest that you get it. Now the interesting thing is this combination of words occurs only one other time in the Bible. And that's in the middle of the Battle of Armageddon at the end of time. Let's take a look at that passage. So Revelation 16 and verse 15, it says, Behold, I am coming like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake, keeps his garments on, that he may not go about naked and be seen exposed. Now, if you go to the original, this, uh, this particular translation doesn't quite put it exactly the way uh, it does in some translations, but if you go back to the original, these four concepts are repeated here. Mm -hmm. The concepts of seeing, the concepts of clothing, the concept of shame, and the concept of nakedness. Those four concepts appear nowhere else in the Bible, but right here and in the letter to Laodicea. Now right here, what is this? This is part of the Battle of Armageddon which uh, I think everybody who knows anything about Revelation knows this is the final battle of earth's history. Uh, let's look at verse 14. For they are demonic spirits performing signs which go abroad to the kings of the whole world to assemble them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Then you have verse 15. And they assembled them at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. So in Revelation's own end time context, you have a, an appeal to those in the, in the language of Laodicea. 
So that suggests that Laodicea is in fact the last church so uh, sort of Earth's from, history. Sort of from Revelation 16, you're seeing allusions in the text yeah. to, to Laodicea. To, to yeah. Laodicea. So Laodicea particularly finds meaning at the end of time. And that's evidence right within the text, you know, apart from any imaginative reconstruction. This is evidence in the text. And I'd point you to one more thing. And that is chapter 3. Again, back to the Laodicean message. And uh, this time we look at verse... 20. It says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone open, hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Um, this is actually a quotation from the Song of Solomon. Uh, in the Song of Solomon, you have King Solomon has got a harem, you know. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an apartment house with lots of little apartments. And when evening comes, he may sort of go down the hallway and say, hmm, well, who shall I visit tonight? You know, he's had, what, a thousand wives, you know. So it uh, must have been a long wait for most of them. But uh, he goes down the hallway and he, decide, he picks one and decides to knock on her door. But in the Song of Solomon, she says she'd been hoping for him to come. Mm -hmm. But it getting late, she says, well, you know, forget about it wash my feet, you know, change my clothes, go to bed. And here's the knock on the door. And she said, no, you know, I'm already asleep. I'm already, you know, do I have to wash my feet again? Do I have to, you know, get dressed again and stuff like that? And then she's laying there thinking, hmm, I think I just said no to something good. And so she runs to the door and opens it and he's gone. So the subtext for Laodicea is Jesus isn't inside the church, he's outside the church. They have closed him out of the door. And in the Song of Solomon base for this text, when she finally goes to the door, it's too late. So there's a sense of finality. If it was not for Revelation 16, the impression would be given that the last church is hopeless. It will never turn around. But the appeal during the Battle of Armageddon means the way is still open. Laodicea can make it if she will. So it seems to me the evidence of the text here is that Laodicea is particularly associated with the end of time. So even with Laodicea being particularly associated with the end of time, from what you've been saying, are you suggesting that maybe in reading the Bible for 50, 60 years that I could find myself identifying with every single church at some point? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it clearly says that each of these messages is for everybody. But uh, many people have seen in these seven churches a sequence of history mm -hmm. all the way from John's day to the end. And that wouldn't surprise us if we find that because this book is supposed to be like Daniel, which has those kind of sequences. But uh, many historians have described the history of the church in terms of seven or eight major eras. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about it is they fit the character of these seven churches pretty well. So if you look at the evidence of history and compare it with the content of the text, it doesn't fit too badly. For example, Smyrna, church number two, is a persecuted church. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seems to fit pretty well with the period of history just after Revelation. Okay. Well, no, thank you, um, Dr. Pauline. You really cleared something up for me. Thank you for joining us on Biblios, the place where we think about biblical thinking. We hope to see you again soon.